All right, what's up everybody? This is Scott here again with a brand new video to help you learn how to trade, invest, and master your finances so you can apply that knowledge in the real world and multiply your money. And this here has been a very, very busy week. I put on a lot of new positions and took a lot more positions off for profits. And so far, and hopefully I don't jinx myself by saying this, I'm on pace for having my first ever perfect month, which is basically a full month without having a single losing trade. Very, very cool. So in this video here, I'm going to show you a lot of clips that I recorded that will show the new positions I put on this week in real time. And you'll see all the analysis and my thought process behind each and every trade. Although there were a few that I was not able to record, so I'll talk about those today. And also make sure you stay for the full video because towards the end, if I go to JWN real quick, you're going to see something very cool with a trade I made on Nordstrom. I basically sold a short strangle on the stock right before the earnings announcement. And what you're going to see is how I turned a pretty massive loser because again, if I zoom in here, look what the stock did after those earnings came out. It blew through my put strike. So you're going to see exactly how I turned what would have been a massive loss into a full profit. Now, as always, before we dive in here, in case you are brand new to the channel, I just want to let you know that you can also find me on Skillshare as well, where you can take my very in-depth classes on options trading and stock market investing. And I provided some links to some of the introductory courses of mine in the description of this video below. So be sure to check them out. And when you sign up for Skillshare using any of those links, you'll get a full one month free trial. Okay, so with that being said, I'm going to stop here and play those clips from this past week. All right, today is Monday, August 23rd, and the stock we're looking at here is EWZ, which is actually an ETF. This one tracks the Brazilian equity markets. And as you can see down here with the implied volatility, this is the main thing that caught my eye. So recently, we are seeing a huge explosion of implied volatility, all the way up to about 48.84%, which is actually very, very high for a broad market ETF. Typically, these kinds of products usually have very low implied volatilities, oftentimes around 20 to 30%. So seeing an ETF with almost 50% implied volatility is very, very high. So of course, what this means is the options on EWZ are going to be a lot more expensive than usual, and therefore, it's going to be advantageous to be selling them. And combined with that, if we zoom in here on the chart now, EWZ has gone through a pretty massive sell-off, going down almost every single day in a row. Moreover, if we look at the RSI indicator right here, and in case you don't know, this one will tell you how overbought or oversold a certain stock is. As you can see, the RSI indicator did cross below 30, which means that this ETF is very, very oversold, at least in the short term. So after I saw this huge down move, combined with the RSI indicator, combined with a huge explosion in implied volatility, and that's why I stepped in and sold some naked put options on this ETF. So yes, I did already make this trade and I actually made it on Friday, August 20th, right before the market closed. So, so at that time I had already finished recording and editing my live option trading video for last week and was not able to include this trade in that video. So that's why I'm talking about it now. So specifically, if you come over to the trade tab, this is the first trade I've done in the October expiration cycle with now 53 days left to go. The reason why I chose this further out expiration cycle is because I wanted to sell these options for a lot more in premium. The ones in September were still pretty cheap and were not worth selling in my opinion. So that's why I went to October. So as you can see down here, I sold the 33 strike put options. And in particular, I sold three of these contracts for about 130 bucks each. So in total, that's a combined credit of around 390 bucks. Pretty nice. And this ETF has moved up a decent amount since I sold these options. So if we come to the monitor tab real quick and go to my EWZ position right there and go over to the far right, as you can see right now, I'm up about 60 bucks on this position. Still a ways to go to hit my profit target, but definitely off to a good start. So that's my EWZ position. And then also let's come over to Alibaba, which is B-A-B-A. -A, and just take a look at the implied volatility on this stock here. This is one of the biggest explosions of implied volatility I've ever seen, all the way from a low of around 40% to over 80%. It basically doubled. And then once again, like EWZ, if we look at the RSI indicator, look how low it's gotten, all the way down to a value of about 20. And then if I expand this down again, so it's easier to see the price action chart, and I'll zoom in a bit. Finally, take a look at this huge down move. This is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine down days in a row. That is extremely, extremely unlikely. Just when you think about the statistics of stock price fluctuations, as I've said many times in previous videos, stock price fluctuations are mostly very random. 
right? The probability of a stock going up or down on any given day is pretty much the same thing as a flip of a coin. So imagine flipping a quarter and getting nine heads or nine tails in a row. That's very, very unlikely. Now that does not mean, however, that this stock has to just turn around today or tomorrow and just explode. It definitely could go down for a 10th day in a row, an 11th day in a row, so on and so forth. The point here though, is I think the odds, the chance of a reversal, a short-term rally basically, I think the odds are more in favor of that happening than a continuation down lower, right? Because even in a very strong downtrend like we're seeing here, the stock clearly does not just go down every single day in a row. After a big down move, what happens? You usually get a short-term relief rally. Big down move, short-term rally. Big down move, and then hopefully short-term rally. So very similar to my EWZ position, I already went ahead on Friday before the market closed and sold a naked put option on the stock. Now for this one, I am in the September expiration cycle, not the October. The reason being is the premium for the September options is still very, very high. So as you can see, I am short the 145 strike put option. I just sold one contract and I sold this one put for over $700 in credit. That's a huge amount for a stock that's only trading for about 155 bucks per share. Now, unfortunately, unlike my EWZ position, this stock is down by a somewhat significant amount today, about 2.2%. So if we come back to the monitor tab and go to my BABA position over here, so far I'm down by about $37. So definitely not a big deal at all. Just got to be patient and wait to see what happens in the near future. But in summary here, both of my EWZ and my Alibaba positions are just simple price reversion plays. For these ones, I did not use really any technical analysis to find support or resistance levels. I just saw that these stocks have had huge massive declines in recent days, which is obviously reflected by the RSI indicator specifically. And then that combined with a pretty nice expansion and implied volatility, that made these trade setups here very attractive to step in and sell, specifically sell put options, right? Because I wanna take advantage of a short-term rally if it does happen here, and selling put options will do that. This is a bullish strategy. And then combined with that, I also want to take advantage of the inflated option prices. Because again, this means when you see an explosion of implied volatility, that means option prices for the stock have also gotten a lot more expensive. And you always want to sell things when they get expensive and buy them when they're cheap. And then finally here, the last thing I want to mention as I was recording this video, if I scroll down here, you can see I was already able to close my Oxy naked puts for a full profit. So this here was a trade I put on late last week. Let's go to the charts real quick and go to OXY. And there we go, let's zoom in a bit and I'll expand these charts down so it's easier to see. And this line in red here is the support level that I picked out. And as you can see, Oxy did cut through it just for a brief period of time, but today it shot right back above it. This stock is up over 6% just today. So that's a big directional move in my favor on those naked put options. And then also we are seeing a bit of a contraction in implied volatility as well. And of course, if an expansion in implied volatility means option prices get more expensive, then a contraction of implied volatility means options get cheaper. So that's why I sold those put options here when they were somewhat expensive. And again, also wanted to take advantage of a directional move, specifically a short-term rally here. So ultimately getting both the move correct and also the implied volatility contraction that I wanted, that allowed me to buy these options back for a much cheaper price. I sold these puts for over 90 bucks per contract and I just bought them back for around 45 bucks as a debit. And then actually one more thing here, you can see I also bought 100 shares of Nvidia. Let's go to the charts real quick on that, NVDA. So this stock is having its third huge move to the upside, one, two, three, and now it has breached my naked call strike. So specifically with this stock, I am short the 215 strike call option. If I scroll down here, there we go. And as you can see, it's now in the money by a small amount. And I'm also short the 180 strike put options. So this was a initially a bullish skewed strangle, but obviously it has totally changed into a very bearish skewed strangle because Nvidia has gone up so much so quickly. And now that my call strike has been breached, that's why I stepped in and managed this position very aggressively by buying 100 shares of this stock. So there we go, that's the update for today. I don't expect to put on any new positions right now because my portfolio is pretty much full. Although now that I took my Oxy position off, I might look around a little bit on my watch list just to see if anything does stand out. And if I do come across a small trade that I can make, then I will record that.
Okay, today is Tuesday, August 24th, and some more good things are happening. This morning, I did take off my UAL strangles for a full profit, and also my Alibaba naked put for a full profit too. So real quick, let's come to the charts, and I already have UAL or United Airlines pulled up here. We'll zoom in. So in case you have not seen my previous live option trading videos where I showed you this trade, this was a very basic short strangle where I noted this support and this resistance level that I thought UAL would stay in between. And as you can see, that definitely has been the case. And in fact, during this trade, UAL did come all the way down and just about touched this support level and then bounced right off it. So looks like these two levels were actually pretty good picks. And specifically, I did sell my strikes for the call option and also the put option to be just beyond these two levels. And then also down here, we got a very nice contraction in implied volatility. You can see it right there. So, so this combined with some more sideways price action is what allowed me to take this position off for a full profit this morning. And then coming over to BABA for Alibaba, and I'll zoom in here too so it's easier to see. So it was on this day, I believe, on August 20th, where I stepped in and sold a naked put option because I did think this stock was overdue for at least a short-term pullback or a short-term rally. Also, of course, the implied volatility was absolutely exploding, so the put option prices were very, very expensive, and therefore it was a great opportunity to step in and sell those contracts, right? And today we got another combination of a contraction and implied volatility. So that's going to make the options on Alibaba a bit cheaper, and that's good for me as a seller. And then also we are seeing a very big bounce today in the stock price. So now at this point, my portfolio is pretty light. I just have EWZ naked puts, an NVIDIA strangle, and a Wynn Resort strangle on at this point. Just three positions. So now I'm definitely on the hunt for more positions. So, And what I'm thinking here is actually stepping in and selling some more options on Alibaba. Even though there is a contraction in implied volatility, at the point where it is now at around 64.66%, this is still the highest point the implied volatility for this stock has been for the entire past one year. And my assumption is over the next few days or weeks, we will see a continuation of this contraction. So in consequence, there is definitely still a lot of opportunity with this stock for the time being. Now, because this stock is up so much today, I'm not gonna sell any naked put options. I'm gonna do a bullish skewed strangle. I definitely do think there is more room that this stock can move to the upside, but in the event that it does perhaps climb a bit higher and then reverses, I don't wanna have any just naked put options sitting there with strike prices that are very close. So for this new trade here, I am going to lean a bit directional, a bit bullish, but I'm mostly just trying to take advantage of the remaining heightened level of implied volatility here. And that's what a short strangle is great for. Now, in terms of picking my strikes, let me expand this down a bit more. I am going to use a bit of technical analysis. So let's go to the drawing tools here and we'll go to this one right there. I would say there's probably going to be some overhead resistance somewhere around this level right here, around 100 and call it 190 bucks per share. And then in terms of a support level, I would say it's probably somewhere around here maybe. Let's draw it over. Call it perhaps 156, 155 bucks per share. So now I'll come over to the trade tab and take a look at the option chain on Alibaba. I'm still in the September expiration cycle with 24 days left to go. The reason being is these options still have a lot of premium in them. They're very expensive. And also nearer term expiration cycles are going to be more sensitive to an implied volatility contraction and also time decay. So what I'm thinking here is I'm definitely gonna sell the 155 strike put option and either the 195 or the 190 strike call option. As you saw on the chart with my technical analysis, I did identify resistance at around 190 and support around 155. So this is definitely the closest I will pick my strikes. But before I make my decision here, I do want to set up this order just to see what the total credit collected would be. So we'll go to strangle and I'll scroll down a bit here so you can see the options. And then down here, I'm going to sell one contract potentially of the 190 strike call option one contract of the 155 strike put option, which is right there. Total credit is 640-ish bucks. And then by comparison, if I were to change this to the 195 strike call, that drops it down to 562, which is still definitely pretty nice, but this stock is rather expensive at 171 bucks per share. I probably would like to collect a bit more in credit for a stock this expensive. So as a result, that's why I think I'm gonna go with the 190 strike call option. And in doing so, that still gives me almost 20 bucks to the upside before my call strike even gets breached. And then of course, on the downside, I have about a $16 move that I can withstand before my put strike gets breached as well. 
Now also by choosing the 190 strike call option, this is now going to be a delta neutral strangle. You can see the delta on my put option is 23. The delta on the call is also 23. And I do think I'm okay with this. I know I said originally I was going to try and do a bullish skewed strangle. But again, because the purpose of this trade is mostly just to take advantage of the remaining heightened levels of implied volatility, it does not matter too much how directional this strangle is. I'm just trying to wait for the implied volatility to contract more, which will reduce the prices of both of these contracts to the point where I can buy them back for a much lower price and make a nice profit. So with that said, let's go ahead and make this order official. We'll go to confirm and send. Buying power effect is 1700 bucks. That's totally fine. And then we'll go to send. And not filled yet, so let's come back to the monitor tab and take a look at what's going on here. So you can see my limit price is 646. The mark price is 645. So I'll come down a few pennies, see if I can get filled very quickly here. I'll come down to 642, and we'll try again. Confirm and send, send. And there we go, just got filled at 645 actually, just got improved a bit. So there we go, I'm now in this trade, and last step here is to set up the buying order to close this trade, if I am correct. So I'm going to buy back both of these contracts, the 190 strike call and the 155 strike put option, which will be right there. And I'll do so for half price. So half of 645 is 322 or so. I'll come down to 320 and then make it a GTC order, confirm and send, send, all done with Alibaba. And then on top of this, what I also want to do later today is sell a strangle on Nordstrom stock. This company is announcing earnings at the closing of today's trading session. And even though the implied volatility is not super high for the stock, there definitely is some elevation as you can see here. And the IV rank is 26, that's not bad. IV percentile is 37, that's okay. But still the overall implied volatility for Nordstrom is 70%, which is very high for an individual stock. But I am going to wait until a few minutes before the market does close so that I can pick my strikes as accurately as possible based on where Nordstrom stock ends up by the end of today. Okay, I'm back a bit later on the same day, Tuesday, August 24th. Like I said, I didn't want to place a trade right before the earnings announcement came out for Nordstrom stock. And so the market is going to close in about one hour. Typically, I would wait a bit longer before placing this kind of trade, but it's definitely close enough. So as usual with my earnings trades, I'm going to go ahead and sell a short strangle here and place my strikes beyond the expected move. So you can see right here, the expected move for this stock over one day is up or down plus or minus by $3.28 or so. So as a result of that, I'm gonna sell the 33 strike put option, which is almost five bucks away from the current stock price. And then along with that, I'm gonna sell the 43 strike call option, also about $5 away. Now notice here the delta on the call option is 26 and the delta on the put is 19. So this is a very slightly bearish skewed strangle. And that's because if you come back to the charts real quick, and I'll zoom in, this stock has gone up one, two, three, four days in a row. And with me being a contrarian based trader, I do like to lean a bit bearish when stocks just skyrocket and then conversely get bullish when stocks sell off pretty hard. So based on this, again, that's why I'm gonna sell a bearish skewed strangle and keep the delta on my call option larger than the one on my put. And that's pretty much all there is to it. So let's go ahead and set up this order. I'm gonna go to sell and strangle. Down here we have the order, 43 strike call option and the 33 strike put option right there. I'm gonna sell two of these contracts, two calls and two puts, and each strangle is gonna be worth around 170 bucks of credit. So in total, that's 340. So everything looks good here. We'll go to confirm and send. Buying power is 762 bucks, that's fine. So we'll go to send. And there we go, just got filled at 172. I got price improved by a little bit, very nice. And then of course, last step is to set up the buying order to close out this position. If it becomes profitable, that is. And so buy back two contracts each of the 43 strike call and the 33 strike put option. There we go. And half of 172 is going to be 86. Make it a GTC order and all done. And then lastly, I do also want to mention that earlier today, my EWZ naked puts also came off for a full profit. So real quick, we'll come to the charts and go to EWZ. This is a very similar trade to my Alibaba naked put that came off as well for a nice profit today. Right, big sell-off combined with a pretty nice big expansion of implied volatility. That's when I stepped in and sold the put options right around this point. And then boom, today especially, very nice rally. A big move higher in the stock price and also now a contraction in implied volatility.
So those two things together reduce the value of the put options I sold enough to where I could buy them back for a much cheaper price and walk away with a nice profit. All right, today is Thursday, August 26th, and what I'm looking at here is Western Digital or WDC. As usual, the main thing that caught my attention with this stock is if you look down here, got a very nice spike in implied volatility right there. Has come a bit down today, but still very elevated overall compared to the past year. And the IV is hovering around 53, 54%. So this stock is definitely gonna have some inflated option prices. That's good for me. And let's take a look at the price action chart. Let's zoom in here a bit. So it looks like something happened yesterday in the market where this stock just skyrocketed for a brief period of time. And now today it's definitely selling back off. Not sure what that event was all about. Don't really care to be honest. All I care about is the high imply volatility. And now if I go to the drawing tools here, and we'll go to this one right there, I'm going to draw a support level right here, and we'll drag it over. So there we go. I do think this level right around 62, 63 bucks per share is a pretty major support level. And currently the stock is getting very, very close to it right now. Now you will also notice that for a few days, the stock did breach the support level, and then it did make its way all the way back up and above. So perhaps that could be a pretty nice indication that this support level is still significant and the stock does not want to break through it permanently, at least yet. But of course, we will see what happens right here now that it's coming back down to that price once again. Either way, I do want to go in and take a shot here and get a little bit bullish on this stock. I do think we might see a nice bounce off the support level. So the two choices I have here are I can sell just a simple naked put option and get very bullish on the stock, or I can sell a bullish skewed strangle. And in this case, I'm going to go with the bullish strangle because one, I am a bit nervous about this stock having broken the support level recently. And then two, if you come to the trade tab now, if I were to sell just a naked put option, I would either choose the 62 and a half strike or the 60 strike. But unfortunately, the 60 strike put option is not selling for enough in premium, in my opinion. And the 62 and a half strike put option can definitely be sold for a very high credit. But the strike price is too close to the actual stock price for me. Right with the stock currently at 62.75, that's only about 25 cents away from the strike price here. That's too close for an opening trade. So as a result, that leaves me with selling the 60 strike put option. And then to take in even more credit, I'm gonna sell a very far out of the money call option. So what I'm thinking is selling the 80 strike call option for about an extra 70 bucks in credit or so. This one has a delta of 13 and the put option has a delta of 35. So that's what makes this a very bullish skewed strangle. And just to give you a visual sense of where my strikes are, let's come back to the charts and let me pull these charts down a bit so it's easier to see. So the 60 strike is all the way down here, well below the support level and also right around the bottom of the short-term basing pattern. And then the 80 strike is all the way up here, a few dollars above the 52 week high for this stock. So both in terms of the deltas on this strangle and also in terms of how much room I'm leaving to the upside for this stock to run, I feel very comfortable with this trade. So I'll come back to the trade tab one more time and make this order official. So I'll right click here and go to sell and strangle. So I'm gonna sell just one contract of the 80 strike call option, one contract of the 60 strike put option, which would be right there. Total credit is much better at 345 bucks. My guess is I will not get filled at this price given that the bid and ask spreads on both of these contracts are a little bit wide. Not too wide to be alarming, but I'm gonna come down to 340 and see if I can get filled very quickly here. So we'll go to confirm and send. Buying power effect is $963, that's fine. So we'll go to send. And there we go, just got filled at 345 actually, got price improved. So awesome, I'm now in this trade. And finally, let's set up the buying order to buy these contracts back for a much cheaper price if I am correct on this position. So buy back one contract of the 80 strike call and then of the 60 strike put, I'll do so for half price. So half of 345 is about 172. I'll come down to 170, make it a GTC order, and then we're all done here. And also I do wanna mention, if you come back to the monitor tab real quick, I did take off two more positions for a profit this morning, my JWN strangle and also my Splunk strangle as well. Now my Splunk trade was something I was not able to record. This was an earnings trade that I put on right before the market closed yesterday on Wednesday, August 25th. So very quickly, if you come to the charts, we'll go to SPLK. This was a very, very textbook standard uh, earnings trade. So let me change my tools real quick, zoom in. So you can see down here, this was the earnings announcement. Looks like they beat expectations by a little bit. 
but still it does not seem like the investors were very happy because the stock is down pretty big today, down around four and a half, now 5%. So I did get the direction correct on this position. I sold a bearish skewed strangle. Specifically, I sold the 175 strike call option along with the 135 strike put option. I sold these contracts in the October expiration cycle, but the main reason why this trade was so profitable just in one morning was because of the nice contraction or crush, I should say, in implied volatility. As usual with an earnings trade, you typically see a nice buildup of implied volatility leading up to the announcement. And then once those figures are released to the public, boom, you almost always see a very large crush in the implied volatility. So if you sell options up here when they're very expensive and buy them back down here when they're much more cheap, you can make the difference in prices as a very nice profit. So in particular for this trade, yesterday I sold that strangle for 660 bucks as a credit. And then this morning I bought those options back for a much cheaper price of $375, making the total profit of 285 bucks just in less than 24 hours. So this is the power of selling options around earnings announcements. They don't always work out. This is not a guaranteed strategy, but in my experience, these are the best kinds of trades for option sellers. At least for me, they have always been my most profitable trades. And then lastly here, as I mentioned, I did also take off my Nordstrom position as well. Now this was a very, very cool trade because if I just sold these options, specifically I sold the 43 strike call option and the 33 strike put option around an earnings announcement. If you come to the charts real quick, go to JWN, look where the stock is right now. It's all the way down to $29.31. Still got a very nice contraction of implied volatility after the earnings came out, but because of this huge down move that occurred, if I had just sold those options, that strangle, and did nothing else, I would have a very big loser on my hands. So why was I actually able to take it off today for a profit? And that's because, coming back here, that's because I shorted 200 shares of stock once it breached my put strike. And as you can see this morning, I bought those shares back to close out the total position, both the options and the stock. So in particular, let's bring back the calculator here so you can see how this works. Let me clear the screen, move this over here. So initially I sold these strangles each for $172 in credit. So 172. And this morning, as you can see, I bought them back as a debit for $398. So we subtract 398, that's a loss of $226 per strangle. And then times two contracts or two strangles, that's a total loss on just the options of $452, ouch. So keep this number in mind. I'm now gonna clear the calculator again. Now, as I said, once the stock price actually breached my put strike, which was 33, at that point, I shorted 200 shares of stock, and the price at which I was able to short those shares was $32.85. And then also this morning, as you can see, I bought those shares back at a price of $29.73. So we subtract from this, 29.73. That's a profit of $3.12 per share times 200 shares. That's an overall profit of $624. And then finally, I subtract from this the losses I incurred on the options, which as you saw was $452. And in the end, that's a total profit of 172 bucks. Very, very cool. So this is the kind of hedging approach I've been experimenting with, basically using the stock to cover my obligations on either a short call or a short put. And specifically, I was experimenting with the ways in which I was going about doing this, either using the shares in increments, or in this case, shorting the full 200 shares immediately. And based on the results so far, I think I'm going to lean in favor of hedging short stock positions by the full amount immediately once my strikes get breached. Because this approach in particular allows you to still make a profit even when your short strikes get breached and by a theoretically infinite amount, right? Nordstrom stock could have gone to zero and I would have still walked away with a full profit. Or in the case of NVIDIA here, I'm currently long 100 shares of this stock because it did breach my short call strike. And right now my losses are very, very manageable. As opposed to where if I did nothing, if the stock just blew through my short call strike and I did nothing, I would be down four, five, six, seven hundred dollars maybe. And now NVIDIA can go to the moon for all I care and I'll still walk away by the expiration date with a full profit. Okay, welcome back. I hope you enjoyed all those clips and especially found my management tactics on that Nordstrom strangle to be very interesting.
And so today I'm probably not gonna put on any new positions because I already have one, two, three, four, five, six positions on currently. And the total notional value of all these positions combined is a little bit high compared to my portfolio value. So basically in short, that means I'm pretty much fully booked on positions right now. But let's still walk through these various positions so you can see where everything is at today. And so as you can see over here, we have another very good day today in the market. The only position where I'm actually losing money today is just my Alibaba short strangle, but still overall, I'm up on this one by about 60 bucks. And so far, as you can see here in total, all my positions are in the green right now, which is very nice. Now I'm not gonna go into super in-depth detail in reviewing every one of these positions, but starting off first with Alibaba, the reason why I'm down on this one today, we'll come to the charts, already have it pulled up. I'll zoom in a bit. It's simply because of a pretty big directional move downward. The stock is down around 2.5% today, which is about $4. And moreover, as you can see here, this is the third down day in a row. So as a result of that, if we come over to the trade tab and go into the September expiration cycle, this is where my strangle is. So still, both of my options are pretty far out of the money, but the stock definitely is getting a bit close to my put strike. So now the delta on my put option of 35 is starting to grow some teeth and get larger. The delta on my call is getting a lot smaller at only 10. So as Alibaba continues to move downward, the losses on my put option are gonna start to accelerate. And also on top of that, if you come back to the charts, implied volatility is also expanding a bit today. And whenever implied volatility expands, option sellers like myself are going to lose money on their positions but still nothing to do on this position except just be patient and see what happens over the next few days and weeks. Let's come back. Now, one of the new positions I put on, which I was not able to record is NUE. And I won't spend too much time on this one. This is a very basic trade, NUE. This was another simple short strangle trade, mostly because when I put the position on a few days ago, implied volatility was very elevated. And as you can see, it has come down rather significantly now. But like I said, very textbook trade. Come to the trade tab and we'll go into the October expiration cycle. I sold the 140 strike call and the 110 strike put. At the time, this was a very slightly bullish skewed strangle, and today it's a little bit more bullish, but nothing crazy. And then as I showed you on the charts with implied volatility contracting a little bit, that's why on this position so far, I'm up about $22. So still a long way to go before I hit my profit target. Next up, we have NVIDIA, my NVIDIA short strangle. All these are short strangles actually. And this one here is another very good example of how using the stock as a hedge can really save your butt when the stock actually breaches one of your strikes. So we'll go to NVIDIA here, NVDA, and look what this stock has done in the recent past. One, two, three, four, five up days in a row, tiny down day, and then today up again. Now we are also seeing a pretty nice contraction in implied volatility, so that is helping my short strangle a little bit, but if we come to the trade tab here, and I believe I'm in September for this one, yes I am, scroll down, you can see now just how far in the money my short call option is. I'm at the 215 strike, and the stock right now is at 224, almost 225. So just like with my Nordstrom short strangle, if I did nothing on this position, then I would be down a lot of money, perhaps well over $1,000 at this point. But if we come back to the monitor tab real quick, and I expand this row, here you can see the 215 strike call option, and yes, I am down on that particular option contract by over $1,000, ouch. I've made about 330 on the put option, that helps a little bit, but also the key thing here is I'm also long 100 shares of the stock, and I bought these shares once it breached my short call strike. As you can see on the stock, I'm up over $900. And now at this point, the stock can go as high as it wants. As long as I keep this 100 shares of stock in my portfolio to basically keep this short call as a covered short call, then I still have the potential to walk away from this trade with a full profit by the expiration date. So mostly because of that stock position, that's why overall I'm up on my Nvidia trade. Very, very cool. Next up, we have my Peloton strangle. This was also a new trade that I was not able to record, mostly because there was not anything special about this one. We'll go to the charts really quick, PTON. Very textbook earnings trade here. The earnings were announced yesterday on Thursday, August 26th. It looks like they fell very far short of their expectations, so that's why the stock is down a huge amount today. But of course, as expected with an earnings trade, we are seeing a pretty nice crush in implied volatility. That is helping. And specifically in terms of my strikes, we'll go to the trade tab here, go into October for this one. I am short the 140 strike call and also the 95 strike put. So 
that big drop in the stock price once those figures came out is pushing the stock pretty close to my put strike here, but nothing too close. And right now with Peloton down around $10, this is pretty much right at the expected move, right? The stock was expected to either move up or down by around $10 or $11. So Peloton did move a lot more than I would like. Typically with these earnings trades, you wanna see the stock move within the expected range. But like I said, also with a contraction and implied volatility, that's why so far this position is still in the green by about 50 bucks. Next up, we have my Western Digital position, which is something you saw very recently. I put this one on yesterday as well. Let's come to the charts. And it looks like the reason why this one is up a bit of money today is because of a nice contraction in implied volatility. You can see it right there. And also, if I come up to the chart and zoom in, the stock is up a little bit today, around just over a buck. So with the strangle that I have on with this position being a bit bullish, that means this directional move upwards is obviously helping my position today as well. And then finally here, the last position I have on is my Win Resorts position, which I've had on for a little while. And this one is a pretty similar story to my NVIDIA strangle as well. So if you come to the charts, go to WYNN. Same thing with the implied volatility, nice contraction over the past few days. That's definitely helping. And this stock now is well through my short call strike. And specifically, my short call strike is, if we go to the September expiration cycle, right here at 96. This was not the original call that I sold as part of this trade when I opened it. Originally, I was short the 115 strike call option, but I did have to roll this one down to collect extra credit because I did lose a bit of money from having to hedge this one by shorting some stock when it did actually breach my put strike. So basically, it breached my put strike a few times, had to short the shares and then buy them back for small losses. So in order to compensate for that, I did have to roll my call down two times and take in extra credit. And then now, with the stock totally reversing these past few days and just exploding in price, it basically whipsawed me and blew through my call. That's why I had to step in and buy 100 shares of this stock. So if we come to the monitor tab real quick and I unfold this tab, you can see my long stock position right there, 100 shares. And the profits on that position are very nicely offsetting the losses on that short call. And so that's gonna do it for today's video. We'll see how these positions pan out over the next few days and weeks. In particular, I'm very interested to see how my win position turns out along with my Nvidia position. So stay tuned to see how those turn out. And so ultimately now with August pretty much coming to a close, just a few days left at this point, it definitely appears that my more aggressive stock hedging management strategy is the much more effective way to do it. And specifically, I'm referring to either, you know, buying or shorting the full amount of shares right when my strikes get breached, as opposed to doing it in increments. Again, this was something I tried out for four solid months earlier this year, and I had amazing results. And then unfortunately, I tried to change it by hedging with stock in increments, as opposed to doing the full thing right out the gate. And although that definitely helped to some pretty significant degree, this approach, like I was saying, does appear to be way, way more effective. And it's definitely the reason why so far, and hopefully again, I don't jinx myself by saying this, is the reason why I'm having a perfect month, right? And in case you're wondering here, since I reset my account at the very beginning of August to try out this more aggressive hedging strategy again, let me undo the privacy settings on this account here real quick. And there we go down here with the overall P&L year to date, which is basically just this past month of August, I've made well over $3,000, which on a $50,000 account is about a 7% return. So a 7% return in just one month is definitely really, really good. I don't expect this to happen every single month, but definitely some very, very encouraging results for this more aggressive stock hedging strategy. And so with that being said, that's going to do it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And please let me know your thoughts or if you've got questions in the comment section below. And don't forget, if you wanna take some very in-depth classes on options trading and stock market investing, then check out my Skillshare courses. Links in the description of this video. And finally, if you enjoyed this video, then please give it a thumbs up, drop a comment, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I drop new videos every single week, and you don't want to miss out. So thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.